is how do you get all your children to take their phones out and start taking pictures? What works? How do you know that that's safe? And so what we've been involved with um, is this CloudLearn project, which uh, is here. And CloudLearn.net, you'll find hugely useful. We've been crowdsourcing schools all around the world. What is effective practice with using Facebook in the classroom, Twitter in the classroom, using mobile phones in the classroom, just borrowing all their ideas just to see what's effective and see what works. It's been really, really, really powerful. And the final report is, is, is up on is up there now. So if you want to, and you can see the final report's title is pretty important. It's uh, an effective end to locking and blocking. Now I know a lot of you are using mobile phones and using Twitter and Facebook, but the, the problem is what happens when the next thing gets invented? You know, what happens if your glasses are smart glasses and, you know, everybody I look at, I get the data um, from their health and their... How do we cope with that? And I think the CloudLearn, I think, has built a methodology which allows us really quickly to respond to new technologies and move on. I'm not going to go into it now. It's a lot, it's a lot, to, it's a lot to look at. So, I'm scampering on fairly quickly, really only um, two things to say. One, one is that the, the net result of all this, of course, is that around the world people are building the most extraordinary um, schools. And I'm just going to scamp a few, of, a few of these classrooms to give you a sense of what's happening. This is one of the biggest primary school classrooms I've been into, 125 children in the same place, all being taught together by a whole gang of teachers, and we'll come back to Zoom classes before we finish, but really, really effective. This is in Denmark, it's a, a, an art bus where they send the bus to visit parents to help the parents become better at traditional school artwork. Because the parents know how to use iPads and mobile phones, but they're not very good at, 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 at painting and printing. Um, this one's in Australia, isn't that beautiful? This is, uh, this is an interesting space in Blackpool. It's a fast room but they have the fastest computers, the fastest printers, the fastest network, and also fast food. So um, when you get there, you take a little ticket, and you can only stay in the place for 20 minutes, and then you have to go. So you just have a... On, the contrast with that would be the number of schools that are doing... I know in Sweden you do a lot of immersion teaching, don't you? Children learn for a whole day sometimes, don't they? Is that, is that, do many of you do that, or is that just, just a few? There is a lot of immersion growing around the world and I think what's happened in the secondary age phase is that people are realising that stopping learning and starting and stopping and starting when the children are really engaged really does get in the way of learning. So that sense of, of keeping the, the learning going for a whole day or a whole week or an extreme case, I think the extreme case in, the, in, in England is a whole month where the children do a whole exam subject in one month and then stop and do something else. Um, that contrast, so 20 minute lessons and one week lessons, you know, mixing it up I think is really, really important. Here's, um, this is a school where the, um, the children um, were not well respected by the local community, so using an artist in residence, um, the children advertised themselves all over the town. The, the advertising in the town was taken over for the children to advertise themselves to the local community and say, this is how good we are, this is what we do. Here's, um, these are lovely little agile spaces when you just need a little bit of, um, of agility in your teaching room. Sometimes even in the biggest spaces you need a little bit of space just to to get together and you can just literally blow these spaces up. In fact the stand next door sell those. It's a standard one of their standard items. Walk over the road and buy them and take one home on the on the ferry. <laughs> Is um, we'll come back to, the, to this space in a, in a, in a moment. This is a chill-out centre. One of the things about pressured learning at the moment is that sometimes you just need to take a moment to relax. So this is in the Netherlands, and it's a chill-out space where the teachers and the children just go to relax and take a moment. But it's it's dressed like a stage, so they change the furniture every week. So it, every time you go in, it feels a little different. By the way, that's the space. You know, it's sort of hanging from the ceiling by wires. Quite scary. <laughs> 
this is um, this is in Denmark. It's in Silkeborg, where they have a, a bread oven in the middle of the school. So when you come into the school, what you smell is fresh bread the whole time, and it just gives you that sense of membership and community and belonging. It's really, really, really important. This is in uh, Thailand, where they're trying to get the children to um, to want to learn to read, want to read more, and particularly boys reading. And uh, I just took this photograph. I didn't pose it. It's, it's where the kids were sitting to do their reading. Um, and uh, one of the things I think you notice as you look around the schools is they always have too much furniture. What children often look for is collaboration and privacy. Children very rarely read sitting on a chair like that. And I'm not confident that they compute a lot sitting on a chair like that either. When you look at what they do at home, it's very often on the floor. So I've become a great advocate of taking shoes off and burning furniture, really, which has been quite a quite good fun. This is a uh, <coughs> big this is a room that's designed um, because boys tend to fidget a lot. So uh, these chairs, are, are, you have to fidget to sit on them, you, just to stay on them. You have to sort of keep using your legs. So it's been a good way of getting boys to be engaged. This is Canberra Primary School in Singapore. And in Canberra Primary School, they have three and a half thousand children in a primary school. It's a really big primary school. One of the ways that it works really well is that every small child is paired with every big child and vice versa. That mixed age thing, which we'll look at in a, in a moment, really, really, really effective. This is a Skype bar at the back of the class. In fact, the class that the children on this stand uh, is their, is their um, one of their teaching rooms. And when they want to talk to other children in the world, they just sit down on Skype and have a Skype bar. Its only purpose is just to Skype backwards and forwards. What we've been doing all day, Skype at the schools all around the um, all around the world. These are interesting. This is some purpose-built furniture at New Line Academy in Kent in England, where when you have a big space and a lot of children learning in it, if you want to get them all together, you just sit them all onto those little those little amps, sort of little it's like a little little miniature amphitheatre really, but it's very light and you can move it around and it works really well. Here's um this is what country would you guess that's in? It's in Australia, in fact, it's, uh, but it's in an Australian school that has a huge number of... I can sit at the front of this, better. Are you sure? I won't ask any questions. <laughs> well, you can look, you can see here, better. It's in Australia, and uh, it's, in a, it's in a school that has a lot of Chinese children in. But look, you see how playful that is. You see how full of play it is. We'll come back to playfulness in just a moment. This school is in Chicago, and you'll see that uh, every surface is a writing surface. So everywhere you... Everywhere you've got a flat space, you can write on it. This is in the this is in the eating space. You never stop. You never stop writing. And this one, slightly bizarrely, this is in uh, um, Yokohama, where the children play in this net before they join the school underneath. So for one term, you this is your playground. It's in the class. It's above the class you're going to be joining. So you get you get really quite used to the class down through the net. I'm, the bit I'm a bit nervous about is this. Um, this bit here, I'm not entirely sure what that's going on there. You know? <laughs> Some slightly alarming. Um, uh, uh, Juliet Heppel's on this stand, some of the way she is at the moment, but this is a classroom that her students designed, um, having looked all around the world for the best ideas of what learning might look like. And you can see that they write on every surface that it's a, it's a space where you can use any technology you like. So we're not saying we will provide the technology, they're saying whatever we have will work when we walk in the room. Um, it's a place where when you want to read, you've got comfortable reading furniture. It's a place that's got mood lighting, so if you want to change the mood of the room, you can just move sliders and the, look, the, mood, the mood could change to, um, to red or to whatever. It's a place where the tools that are part of their everyday life get used in their everyday learning, Facebook and Google. It's a place where lots of different ways to see it. And children look at you, you're all different shapes and sizes. Children are too, why would they all sit on the same um, furniture? Now what's interesting about this space is that one of the things they do of course is to write on is to write on the surfaces. And um, when I showed that to a school in Australia, uh, I showed it to them at 2.30 on the Wednesday. I went back at 9.30 the next Thursday morning. Um, 
Centre but half a day later and the children had already stolen the idea from the school in London and said yeah we can do that we can write on the dead they'd found white desks that they could write on they'd, uh, they'd taken their shoes off because the London school is a shoes off space and look at what they're writing about by the way they're writing about the effect of colour on learning so you know in, in less than 12 hours three things have changed significantly just by borrowing ideas from other schools and by the way if you haven't done this test writing you just take your mobile phone out and take a picture of it so as you're writing you have a sense of audience you know as you're writing other people are looking at your writing and you've always got a record of it afterwards so it works really well we couldn't have done this without without mobile phones but if every child's carrying a camera why wouldn't why wouldn't you use it as, as, as part of all that? It's a lovely example, I think, of how quickly all this can change. Well, look, I'm conscious of your time. Uh, there's three other things I want to show you just quickly before, before we go.